Yesterday was a holiday for those who celebrate May the 4th, as in May the Force be with you, a day for those who love Star Wars. In my home, we started early with an animated series and crafts and Death Star waffles. And there is some great wisdom in these stories about the Force, which very closely resembles the Holy Spirit. But what I noticed most as I watched one of the many Star Wars movies were the tractor beams that would draw in the smaller ships to the larger ships out in space. And in these instances, the heroes were being brought into the evil empire's clutches, pulled in by this tractor beam. And our heroes would always be successful in escaping the clutches and temptations of the empire because of their friendship with one another and their ability to abide in the good power of the force. In the case of our gospel today, I invite you to consider this image of being pulled in by forces of empire, forces of our culture that draw us away from the gospel message of love. And John tells us how we can combat that by abiding in Jesus' love and friendship. In the passage we just heard, Jesus shares his final discourse with the disciples after he has shown them how to love one another through foot washing and the Eucharist. And he is providing his disciples with what he wants them to hold on to before they experience the horror of his crucifixion and get pulled back into their culture, into a culture of death and away from his mission of love. And so he invites them to abide with him and abide in his love. And if we too can abide in the love of God poured out in Christ, we can share that love and build up God's kingdom, no matter what circumstances we find ourselves in, no matter which way the tractor beam is pulling on us. Because we are constantly being drawn to abide in places of empire, consumerism, aggression, power, war, dehumanization through racism, sexism, and the many other isms populating our culture today. Yet Jesus is always drawing us to himself as well. And that pull is strong enough because it brought us here today, as opposed to the myriad of other places we could be on this rainy morning. Because Jesus is more powerful than all the empire has to offer just more subtly so. In the gospel today, we hear that we have been chosen by Christ first, not the other way around. What does it feel like to be chosen? We all know what it's like not to be chosen or chosen last for the school teams or not to be chosen for a new position or as a romantic partner, or as a friend, or as a member of a different community. And often in our culture, to be chosen requires strict adherence to rules and regulations or performances that may not be completely true to who we are. And that is not so with Jesus. Before we could adhere to or perform anything, Jesus draws him to us to himself just as we are, no matter how lost or limited or broken we feel. Jesus has already chosen us and chooses us every moment of every day. And not only does he choose us, but he invites us to abide with him and in him. And he calls us friends. He calls us into a mutual relationship of love and joy. And the way for that mutuality to to blossom and to take place is to follow his commands. Now, usually friendship and commands don't always go together, but taken in the way that Jesus is offering, his commands are simple, yet very difficult to to happen. And they call us into deep belonging with our creator and with one another as children of God, because first and foremost, that is who we are. And so these commands are not the commands of our culture to perform, to 
look a certain way, to act a certain way, not in the way of our culture. Jesus' commandments do call us to act a certain way, and that's out of love. And his only commandments are that we love one another and abide in that love, sharing the love that we have received from Jesus, which Jesus himself had received from God with others. And so Jesus is not asking us to adhere to rigid rules, to perform or to be something, something or someone we are not. He is asking us to share in the love that has been freely shared with him. Jesus is asking us to become fully human, fully ourselves, and to be love. He calls us to dwell with him always and to be at home, our one true home, our ultimate source of belonging with God. And this is not the kind of belonging our culture perpetuates. Our culture perpetuates a belonging that is based often on fear or conformity, on consumerism, on divisions of power, wealth, status, race, gender, and privilege. And those all wind up being hollow and not bringing joy as Jesus promises or being motivated by love. Instead, Jesus tells us we must lay down our lives for another, the others, not just our family or friends or those who look and think like us, but the poor, the destitute, the lost, the unhoused, the mentally ill, the grieving, the sick, the immigrant, those on the other side of our political spectrum. And what does love look like from that perspective? How do we acknowledge that we are all God's children and that we all belong? As we belong to God, we are called then to be friends of Jesus, not servants, and we are called to practice that love, but always with God's help. We cannot do it alone but we can receive that love. And it can change us. Take a moment and think of the ways you have experienced this love of God in your life, this sense of belonging, perhaps, with God or Jesus. Perhaps it was a moment. Perhaps it's been many moments. And where do you hold on to these experiences in yourself? And how often do you allow yourselves to go there, to dwell there? And in what other places do we abide? Maybe in keeping up with our culture. Maybe we abide in despair or resentment or escapism or addiction. We always have a choice. And so what might it take for us to respond to Jesus' invitation to abide in love, in him, in God's love, which has been received by us? And it's not just a passive thing. We don't just receive God's love and dwell there, but it's not meant to stay just within us. It's, it's there to give us what we need so that it can flow outward into the world, into a world that seeks belonging and hope and friendship and love. Today, we have an opportunity through our outreach fundraiser, which you may have already seen in your bulletin, to consider how we might give from the places where we have already received. And while today's breakfast is about raising funds, it's also about learning who the others are in our community. And while we ask that you donate generously from your financial resources, I invite you to listen for the small, still voice that might also be calling you to become involved with those children of God who are in need of the basics of life that we often take for granted. You may consider joining a facets team or volunteering at the Lamb Center. You may wish to join the outreach ministry here. 
Or perhaps you feel called to learn more about what causes people to experience poverty and homelessness and what we can do about it in our own civic world. There is indeed a force at work drawing us here, drawing us together, and my friends, it is the Holy Spirit. And she has drawn us together today to worship at this particular place and time. And she will draw us ever deeper into the dwelling place of love that is Jesus. And so let us pray. Oh Jesus, we ask that you continue to draw us to yourself. Remind us that we belong ever in your love, that we are at home in you. And grant us the desire and the freedom to abide in and with your love so that we may love one another as you love us today and every day. Amen. <laughs>